introduce Christina. Christina is uh, Boston Merchant Liaison for Scavenger. Um, and Christina, thanks for coming. And uh, also thanks for having us in your, your fair city here. Christina um, is in Boston, so is Scavenger. Yes. Uh, so why don't we start by uh, telling us a little bit about yourself, your role, and uh, just Scavenger in general for those unfamiliar. Yeah. And also, um, can we get the uh, slides on the uh, downstage monitor, please? Um, so, hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Scavenger is a Google-funded mobile gaming company uh, just across the river in Cambridge. So we're all about fun. So I guess question number one is, everybody having fun so far? <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I'm the Boston Merchant Liaison, which means that I work with all of our local businesses for both Scavenger and a new product that we re recently rolled out called Level Up. Um, so I work with all of our local businesses to increase engagement, build loyalty, um, and you know make sure that everyone's having fun. So um, pretty quick intro, uh, background on Scavenger. We started about two years ago in 2008. Um, I'm sure that some of you know our chief ninja, uh, Seth Prebatch, who dropped out of Princeton to start um, Scavenger. And since then, we closed our first round of funding with Highland Capital, a, a local uh, VC firm here, and then closed our second round with Google Ventures and just December, past December, best Christmas present we could ask for, um, closed our third round of funding with Balderton. Um, so that's sort of the, the quick history, and I'll let you get right to it. Sure. So let's talk about Scavenger and how it's exemplary of uh, companies that are, or they have to be basically quick on their toes in what is really a nascent and quickly evolving mobile environment. Um, so you guys have kind of pivoted in a few ways since you started a few years ago. Talk us through that evolution and what you've kind of learned and really where you are now in terms of the model. Yeah, definitely. Um, so our, uh, our chief ninja talks a lot about building the game layer on top of the world. Um, so I would say the one thing that we've been true to since 2008 to now is really using game dynamics and game me mechanics to impact people's behavior in the real world. And how that started was through text message, you know, treks or games on campus. Um, so it started for universities. We ran uh, big regional promotions with jewelers where we'd, you know, hide a $20,000 diamond ring and locals would come out and basically solve challenges on their phone via text message to try to win this ring. And that was probably about our first, you know, um, six months to eight months of scavenger, building, building off of the SMS platform. Um, obviously, when we closed our second round of funding with Google, we were like, hey, what, what can we do to make this even cooler? Um, and that's when we rolled out scavenger, as all of you would know it today, in the iPhone and Android platforms. Um, and so we were you know, able to expand a lot on that, um, introducing the social check-in, um, you know, sort of a, a spin-off of Foursquare's check-in, but you can actually check in with your friends by uh, bumping phones or shaking phones. Um, I didn't bring my cell phone up because I think it would... Uh, Cause some feedback. Yeah, exactly. But I'll social check-in with anyone later. Nice. Um, and all sorts of other um, you know, QR code challenges, photo challenges, things that you know, your smartphone allows you to do, whereas text message phones just don't. Um, and, and then, yeah. and through that, it seems like you've gone from an enterprising, or sorry, enterprise-focused strategy. I mean, working with schools, working with organizations, um, to then one which is consumer-facing. Um, now, the challenge there, it seems, is that this is a quickly crowding space. So you guys have done a good job to kind of differentiate Scavenger. I think the culture of the company and the fun and the, your titles, Chief Ninja, for example, um, all these things kind of come through in the product. What are the other things you've done to differentiate it, rise above the noise where there are so many products in this check-in space? Um, you know, you mentioned earlier one thing that stayed true is that game layer. Is that what you kind of point to as the, the thing to just make it fun? That's your secret sauce? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think um, when you're looking at four squares and loops and whirls and gowalas, um, I really view them as location-based social networks. And we really like to think of ourselves as a location-based game. Right. Um, and so, you know, rather than just checking in and sort of letting your friends know where you are, um, you know, with Scavenger, you can check in, you can do challenges. Um, that's sort of the game element that, that we use, so check-in versus challenge. Um, and that is completely scriptable. Yep. And so when you're talking about the um, enterprise model, uh, local businesses, universities, national brands, Coca-Cola Journeys, AT&T can actually script custom challenges that allow consumers to engage with their brand. Yep. Um, and then consumers themselves can actually uh, script their own challenges as well. So mm -hmm. it's a privilege that you can unlock from earning points 
and then um, I could create, you know, Christina's Coffee House Challenge at my favorite coffee shop with, you know, that all my friends could play. So that creation piece is um, both on the enterprise and consumer side. Sure, and you mentioned some of you, your ad partners, and I want to talk about that and switch over to that. That's a great yeah. segue. You know, you guys are already monetizing in a space where everyone else is just at the mode of just building up usage and kind of weary of bringing in advertising um, you know, maybe as they should be, but you guys are kind of the poster child for having real revenues, working with major brands. You're working with the New England Patriots. You mentioned, I think, Journeys, AT&T. Um, I think you, you have 400 ad partners, correct? Um, um, I think we have 1,200 paying okay. clients. Well, this must um, be an old stat. I apologize. So um, my question is, what are the different ways or what's the spectrum of options for how you work with them and what are they getting out of it? Are they looking at, it, at this as an ad buy or is it something that is, you know, you're working with them on a monthly basis to get their brand more out? This is this brand engagement. Is it direct responses? Is it a combination of all that? I mean, where does all that begin and end? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I would say, you know, the, the three bullet points and we'll dive into them in, in a little bit more mm -hmm. depth would be um, engagement and fun. So, you know, brands, brands use Scavenger, work with us to make sure that their customers are having fun, engaging with their brand, sort of bringing out your unique brand personality. And that's true for, you know, journeys all the way down to, um, you know, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's unique about MIT? What's unique about journeys? How do we get students or customers to engage with these sort of fun features about our brand? Um, so engagement and fun is sort of point number one. Um, point number two is really um, building loyalty. Yep. So <clears throat> through Journeys, uh, and, and we can use the Journeys campaign, Buffalo Wild Wings is another one that we just launched. I know we have some stats we'll go into for that next, yep. um, But Journeys, you know, big goal is how do we get customers to come in and, and keep coming back? And so I can actually earn points over time and unlock a reward for $10 off a pair of shoes. Yep. Um, so it's, you know, encouraging repeat visitation. Um, I'm doing these fun challenges, like snapping a picture of, you know, the superhero converse that they have in the store and, mm -hmm. you know, talking about what superhero I would want to be. So engaging with sort of their quirky brand, um, but also, you know, encouraging me to come back and become a loyal customer and rewarding me for that loyalty. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say loyalty is piece number two. Um, and I'd say the, the third bullet point would be really going back to um, social recommendations. So um, in the Buffalo Wild Wings campaign, we've seen about 45% of people posting all of their activity to Facebook and Twitter. Nice. So when I you know, eat my delicious uh, garlic barbecue chicken wings, I can take a picture of them, I can share nice. to Facebook, I can tell my friends, you know, um, P.S. try the extra spicy hot sauce. Um, and so it's a really powerful way to communicate um, and, and sort of get some of that word of mouth viral marketing on behalf of a brand. Sure. Now, among those 1,200 ad partners, do you have a, a breakdown of, I mean, most of the examples we hear about are the larger brands, and those are obviously easier to kind of tackle from a sales perspective because it's one handshake instead of the massive but elusive small business mom and pop marketplace, which is, you know, millions of little handshakes. It's hard to kind of get your arms around it from a sales perspective. Um, have you done that yet? If not, are you going to move down market to kind of see that opportunity? Will it be kind of a self-serve dashboard, kind of like what Foursquare does? Or you know, how are you thinking about that opportunity? Uh, yeah, great question. With Scavenger, um, we've sort of just started working with local businesses, and that's through our rewards platform. Okay. Um, so for, for local businesses, it would be same concept, creating a custom challenge. Um, you know, For 10 points, 15 points, 25 points, I could get 10% off my check or a free cup of coffee nice. or you know, upgrade my soda size. Um, and so same concept concepts of engagement, yep. building loyalty, um, social recommendations, but just on that smaller scale. So right. um, currently in the Boston area, we're working with about 150 businesses in our rewards platform, and then um, Level Up, which just launched, we're working with about 50 businesses, local businesses on sure. that piece of the platform. Now, is well. that the majority of that activity is being done by them on the dashboard? Are you working with them in any ways to coach them through it? I mean, that's probably hard to do with you know such a fragmented market, but how does that work? Yeah, on the scavenger side, we have a really, really easy self-serve yep. builder site where you can log in. Um, everybody gets five free capacity, which means you can build five game elements. So challenges, um, treks, rewards. So a local business could have you know three rewards and two challenges, and that's all completely free and self-serve. Okay. Um, we do have you know a whole team, myself included. Ooh, um, sorry. Don't do uh, that again, please. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Myself included, and you know, there's about five of us in Boston that are all working with our local businesses on both rewards and level okay. up. So um, we'll we'll hold anybody's hand through the process as well. Good case study time. You mentioned whoa, Buffalo uh, Wild Wings a few times. Um, 
you know, talk us through some of the success metrics that you've seen out of this campaign. Yeah. Um, so Buffalo Wild Wings, and I actually don't think there are any in sort of the greater Boston area, but, um, you know, just show of hands, how many people are familiar with Buffalo Wild Wings? All right, good. So a lot of you. Um, so really delicious chicken wings, in case anyone you know, wanted to know. Um, and we launched a campaign with them um, earlier this year, about seven weeks ago. And I would say the, the biggest takeaway is that there have been about um, 500, and, well, exactly 579,000 challenges done. But the most interesting piece of that is we've had close to 100,000 players, which means each player is doing an average of six challenges when they're at Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, so instead of just coming and you know checking in, saying that I'm here, um, you're actually driving that engagement right. much, much deeper. So now before you go on, you you mentioned uh, challenges briefly before. Yeah. For those unfamiliar, what what are the concept of a challenge? I think we're familiar with, but you know what's an example challenge that any one of us could kind of set up for me and my friends, that type of thing. Yeah, well, I can actually tell you, um, you'll see that there's also about 8,000 user-created challenges. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, the most popular uh, Buffalo Wild Wings user-created challenge is called Sauce Face. And it's literally, take a picture of your friend after they have sauce all over their face right. from eating you know, the buffalo chicken wings. Uh -huh. Um, so everybody seems to think that one is hilarious. So tons of great pictures of. Sure. Now is that manually vetted in any way to make sure, like, okay, that's someone that has sauce all over their face? Check. Um, um, so in terms of verification, um, photo challenges are obviously the hardest yeah. to verify. Um, but we really rely on our community to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so if I see, you know, if I'm earning points to get my free bucket of wings, you're going to be watching for people that are cheating. And yep. so I can actually flag your photo challenge and okay. say, Mike, you cheated. That's your foot. Um, right. You know, take away his points. Yeah. Well, I am the king of fake check-ins on, on uh, Foursquare. Ah, so. uh, bad news. <laughs> um, so we don't have that much time left, but I want to talk about you know, one of the concepts I mentioned earlier, deals meets mobile. Um, you guys are one of the few uh, out there that, that are doing this in your recently launched Level Up. Uh, you can talk about what it's going for, and, and I'll just say briefly, what I like about this is that one of the challenges with deals and group buying um, is that it is customer acquisition, but it's not necessarily the customer that you want. It's, it's a deal seeker. Um, who's going to move on to the next one after, and it's not really retaining that, that customer. So this is a play at loyalty, that missing piece of loyalty. So uh, explain a little bit more about what you're doing here. Um, yeah, th thanks for the lead-in. Um, you know, we're obviously still um, using game mechanics and game dynamics to try to impact behavior and, and generate loyalty and, and taking it sort of one step further than our rewards platform actually generate revenue for local businesses as well. Um, and so Level Up is um, sort of inspired by the Daily Deal, but designed uh, to, to create loyalty. So introducing new customers over three experiences. So it's actually a, a type of game dynamic called a progression dynamic. And so I'm you know, introduced to a place with um, an experience or a deal that looks most like a group on our living social. It could be, you know, um, and actually we'll use Boloco. At Boloco, it was $5 for $10. And once I've actually purchased that, I unlock the ability to level up. So this is where that progression dynamic begins. Um, and when I unlock that ability, you'll see um, that or you won't see on this slide. Um, the second level was you know, $5 for $15 worth of, um, of burritos at Boloco. So from a consumer perspective, I'm getting rewarded with sort of better deals as I come back. I'm being rewarded for my loyalty. Um, and from a business perspective or from a merchant perspective, instead of getting those you know, deal hunters that come in once and don't come back, we're really trying to create a model that sort of breaks through what we call uh, you know, daily deal ADD, where I'm sitting there waiting for the next it. deal. Right. Well, we're unfortunately out of time. This is great. I wish we could talk all day about this stuff, but that's why we're calling it a lightning round. Um, so please join me in thanking Christina. Uh, thanks for being here with us.